Yeah, how, how do I start? Maybe like I usually do. Good morning, dear family and friends. Um, yeah, it's like what you did now was, I say to myself, Johan, just don't start crying during the announcements. <laughs> that won't be good. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in live on our live stream this morning. Uh, those of you maybe on live stream that don't know, this would be my last service of worship here at Knox as the pastor of this wonderful congregation. And this is the reason why people clapped hands and stood up when Johan came in. This is not the way it works every Sunday, I can <laughs> promise you. Um, but thank you so much for being here this morning. This is a very special event for me and a very special event, I believe, for you as uh, my church family. Before I get into some thank yous that I would like to share this morning, first, a bit of sad news. You know, this is life. Um, I was also looking forward to this service, and there was somebody that would have been here this morning with his wife, uh, Don Laird, <clears throat> and Faith. Uh, we had lots of fun last Sunday after the baptism service, and uh, Don passed away yesterday morning at home. So I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, this is the uncertainty of life uh, many a time. We think we have a tomorrow, and sometimes we don't. So let's keep faith in our prayers uh, when we leave here this morning as well. So... I said to the choir this morning down in the parlor, you know, um, I was thinking how to go about thanking uh, everybody here at Knox. And I said to myself, it's impossible to thank everybody because then we will be here for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and that won't work. So I have a few individuals that I would like to thank. And uh, then there's also this deep felt general thanks and thankfulness in my heart and in my life. And when I look at the Knox family, uh, I would maybe like to start with the congregation and thank you as my family members to, uh, to everything that you've meant to me uh, over these past 13 years and five months. It was an honor to serve amongst you and alongside you. Thank you for, for being who you are. I also would like to thank our leadership, our session. Um, <clears throat> I'll never forget when I started here, my first session meeting was kind of an anxious moment for me. Wilma, I think you were part of the session then as well. And I said to them, you just need to know I said to the search committee, what you see is what you get. Um, I know the book of forms, um, but you need to remember that when we get together as uh, leaders, this is not parliament uh, in sitting in Ottawa. So we will follow the rules, but it's very important for us to work with consensus and discern God's will. And if there's one or two of you that would like to have another opportunity to speak your mind or ask questions, welcome to do so. Um, and uh, I look back on our session meetings and our leadership meetings with a lot of joy. So thank you so much for allowing me to do things a little bit different as well as far as leadership at uh, Knox is concerned. A special word of thanks, Wendy, to you and Congregational Life and everybody that was involved in arranging the luncheon after the service this morning. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Shirley, um, thank you for many, many years of being the most wonderful colleague here at Knox. Without you, I think the ministry at Knox would have not been able to proceed and progress the way that Shirley took care of all of our members 
that couldn't attend services of worship anymore. Uh, her work ethic was just amazing. Um, people love you, Shirley, and uh, thank you so much for all these years. <clears throat> Herb is not here this morning. He might be watching this afterwards, and I also want to thank him because he was my first go-to pastor when I was on holidays or had a weekend off to come and do pulpit supply here. And then I also would like to thank Arnold, um, my senior colleague uh, here at Knox. Arnold, thanks for being on the background, but also reaching out to me many, at many occasions and uh, being a kind of a mentor as well. Arnold will be turning 90, I think, on uh, Valentine's Day. And I said to him the other day, you know, Arnold, when I look at you, I hope that I will be blessed as you are blessed with your health to be able to do what you still do at the age of 90. He still bikes. He still bikes. Arnold, can I share them with him the secret of your biking? Yes, I think so. Arnold said, the only thing that causes me a problem when I bike is to get onto the bicycle. But when I'm on, um, I'm unstoppable. So thanks, Arnold, for all these years of helping out here at Knox. <clears throat> um, Chris, where's Chris? Oh, there he is. Chris, thank you so much for um, the more than 13 years working together the wonderful gift of music that you bring to the Knox family, and may God bless you in the future here at Knox. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that Mary is here as well this morning, our office administrator. Uh, Mary, thank you for everything that you've done over the years, working alongside me, taking care of all the administration here at Knox. May God bless you into the future as well. <clears throat> Brian, a word of thanks to you for taking care of the live streaming. This was a learning curve, for, especially for me, but uh, thanks for you, to you. And Phil, thank you for the sound. Gavin and Sherry is here as well this morning. Gavin, thank you so much for taking care of the sound as well when uh, it was possible for you to do that over many years. Uh, a service of worship without you guys is kind of impossible. Thank you so much. Something that was very emotional for me this morning was when I saw the Dorchester people here, <laughs> people from my previous congregations. So uh, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot to me. Um, when I think about Dorchester and South Missouri, this is my birthplace in Canada. I don't think it's easy for a congregation to call a minister from a, a different continent. Um, and those two congregations were willing to do that, to bring me and my family to Canada. So it means a lot to me, after saying goodbye to you guys 13 and a half years ago, um, to see you here this morning. Thank you very, very much for doing this. Thanks. <clears throat> and then my eye caught people that came in a little bit late. <laughs> and I don't blame them because it is my wonderful daughter-in-law, Mel, and my wonderful son, Hannes, and Max and Sterling. Thanks for being here this morning. Hannes, Mel, am I allowed to put you on the spot? Okay. <laughs> Would you mind just standing up so people can see what you look like? 
There they are. <laughs> Friends, I think, is there anybody that feels left out? <laughs> okay. Once again, thank you very, very much. Um, just one other comment, quick comment. You know there's a significant other in my life, Jeanette Marais, who lives in South Africa, and she also emailed me and texted me twice and said, Johan, I wish I could be there this morning with this wonderful Knox family. So on behalf of Jeanette, um, um, she thanks you for uh, your hospitality, your friendliness, your compassion when she visited here twice in the past. So just so you know, Jeanette is with us. And most probably, um, she is uh, connected via the live stream this morning. So welcome, Jeanette. And thanks for sharing your, your thanks with the Knox family. Selma, are you bringing the Bible for us? Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Mingan. Let's call on God in worship. As the sun rises every morning, so sure we are God is present with us. We know the warmth of his love, the assurance that he cares, confident of our own worth in his eyes. We are washed over with grace, accepted as we are. Let us worship God. Amen. Dear family and friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.
My goodness, Graham. Peace to you. Yeah, all the way from Montreal. Yeah, great. Thanks, thanks, Graham. Yeah. Um, our hymn of praise this morning is hymn 457. Now thank we all our God. Let's join together in prayer. God, our Father, 27 days ago on Christmas morning, we celebrated the reality that you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. The light of your love shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God of light and new beginnings, challenge us to set out in obedience when we hear the resurrected Christ say, As the Father sent me, so I send you. We ask your guidance as we set out into a new chapter at Knox in the months to follow. And when we sometimes stumble and fall, Remind us that Jesus came into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world. Amen. I would like to share a few uh, thoughts from the Apostle Paul this morning as our assurance of pardon. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Oh, 
for a short children's story, children's lesson. So all the children present here this morning, welcome. Max, if you're comfortable, you can come to Opa. <laughs> Sterling as well, I don't know. Many a time tell him stories at night when he goes to bed, but this is the first time he'll have one from his Opa in church. You, okay, thanks, Mel, for bringing them. You can just have a seat here if you're comfortable. Sit here? Sit. Oh, my goodness, Max. <laughs> Mom, you can sit here if you want to. There we go. Okay, so what I did was I brought a box this morning. Um, you see this box? Cameron, would you like to take out something in this box? What is that? You don't know. <laughs> Show it to them and see if they, can, they know what that is. There's lots of it here. Just look at it. Yes. It's the order of the service. Aha, Mackenzie. These are my printed orders of service with my sermons, scripture readings. And there's another one like this. Just look at it. Yeah, there's another one like this down in my office. And today is my last day of preaching here at Knox. And I said to myself, maybe I should show you how many sermons I've preached over 13 years. Two boxes full. And when you retire, you sometimes wonder as a minister, 
to what effect? <laughs> Did people hear anything you said over 13 years? It's just one of those things that you sometimes wonder about. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I always believed in a very important passage of Scripture. And that's how I looked at my ministry and my ministry with children and youth as well. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus says, um, the, uh, the kingdom of God is like this. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. And whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces the crops. And isn't that wonderful to know that Johann was called just to sow the seeds, just to sow the seeds, the seeds of the good news. And God is the one who, like the soil, lets this seed grow. So I think, Anna, sorry. Only. Okay, thanks, Mackenzie. So this is what I did over all these years. I just sowed the seed, and I trust that God will let this seed grow in the lives of people. And it's wonderful this morning. I had some people coming up to me and shared a little bit of some of the seeds that I sowed in their lives that actually matured, and that's just wonderful to know. So you also need to know, whenever we share the good news message of God's love, God uses that. It's like the sun. We don't know where the um, <laughs> we don't know where the sunlight of last year went, but we know the plants took it up, and we have uh, food because of the sun and the rain. And this is how God's word works as well. Let's have a short prayer together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. And thank you that we can sow your word. Let your word grow in our lives. Amen. Excellent. So there's no Sunday school this morning. You can go to the back. Uh, Karen has some uh, activities for you there. And thanks for being here. Max, you want to pick up something at the back there? You and Sterling? He seems ready to be on his own now, just when he's ready. <laughs> See you tonight, Max. So, my dear family and friends, this morning my sermon is going to be a little bit different. For 13 years, you always had a scripture reading at the beginning. And uh, I must admit, this wasn't the easiest service to prepare for, for this Sunday. And I thought about many passages that might fit this morning, and I said to myself, maybe over these past 13 years and five months, I've preached more than enough to the Knox family. Maybe today I would just like to share some thoughts uh, from my heart with you as a, as a family and with you as my friends. And there will be some scripture readings that I will read as I reflect on certain aspects of uh, my ministry. Now, in the life of a minister, or in my life, there's three services that's actually difficult services, really difficult services. One, of course, as you know, would be a funeral. That's not an easy service for me as a pastor to do. The second one um, is when I had to preach for a call in a congregation. There's a lot of stuff at play when you preach for the call in a congregation. And then the third one is when I had to say goodbye to church families in the past, as I have to do today with the Knox Church family. Oh, this is even more difficult because of the long relationship that I have with Knox. This is the congregation that I served the longest 
in my 40 years of ministry, congregational ministry, just so you know. But this is also special because today I'm also saying goodbye to a lifestyle of 40 years. Being involved in full-time congregational ministry becomes a lifestyle. It became a lifestyle for me. So it's, it, it was difficult to say, so how, how do I deal with all these emotions? I, I would maybe like to share a few things this morning about the past, about the present, and about the future. So when I look at the past, when I look back, uh, many of you don't know, but my active personal relationship with Jesus Christ started way back in March of 1974. And that is on a Saturday evening when I attended a missional outreach weekend in the Dutch Reformed Church of Henneman East, where I was in boarding school. And I was so overwhelmed by God's grace and God's love in my life, and I knew the following day that God is calling me to full-time congregational ministry. In April of 1976, in my first year of studies, theological studies, uh, stuff was really getting tough for me, especially with the languages, Greek and Hebrew. It was like a mountain that I had to climb. And I just said to myself, Yawan, there's no way you're going to climb this mountain to the end. I was disheartened. And I decided to change direction. I wasn't sure if theological studies was for me anymore. I went to my mother and I said to her, Mom, I think I'm going to change direction. And she said, um, I'm fine with that. I had wonderful parents. I'm fine with that. But I just want you to check this with Dad as well when he comes back home from work. And when Dad came back from work, I said to him, Dad, already shared with Mom, um, I'm planning on changing direction. And he said to me, the same as my mother, that's fine with me, but I just need to ask you one question. Did you clarify this with the Lord already? That one thing, did you clarify this with the Lord? And when he said that, I immediately knew I didn't. The reason why I wanted to change is because of this language mountain that I felt I cannot climb. And I went into prayer that evening, and I said, Lord, please just show me through Scripture if this is what you want me to do with my life and that is to be in full-time congregational ministry. And God gave me Acts chapter 1, verse 8 that evening. It was underlined in my Bible. It just stood out. And uh, that wonderful verse, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And you know what? I never, ever looked back again. Um, I was sure this is what God wants me to do with my life. So, this, this one verse actually brought me to Canada as well. You must know there's not a lot of ministers in South Africa that immigrate to other countries to pursue a full-time congregational ministry career. My move to Canada was not an easy one. It was a very, very difficult move to make. But in deciding whether we should come or not as a family, history in South Africa also helped me a little bit. There was a time in the Dutch Reformed Church that they couldn't find ministers anywhere to fill the vacancies. And then they went to Scotland and they found a number of Scottish ministers that came to South Africa. And I said to myself, well, if Scotchmen can come to South Africa and learn the Afrikaans language to, to have a ministry amongst these Boers, you know, 
what am I that at least have a kind of a reading capability and some kind of an ability to express myself in English to not come to Canada? If God opens the doors, and this is how I prayed, Lord, if this is your will for Johan and his family to come to Canada, you need to open the doors. I didn't have a specific passage of Scripture that I can quote here this morning and say, this is what brought me here. It was, if you open the doors, I will go through these open doors. And um, what, a, what a wonderful ministry I have had in my 20 years here in Canada, and especially amongst uh, the, uh, the Knox family. And as I've said this morning during the announcements, the Dorchester and the South Missouri family who actually brought us here. It was, it was wonderful. Um, I, um, I have tried in the past, and I still continue doing that, whenever I prepare my sermons, to adhere to what the Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, when he said, Whoever speaks must do so as speaking the very words of God. And this is a passage of Scripture that weighs very heavily on my heart each and every week when I prepare my sermons. Um, when you speak, Johan, publicly based on Scripture, it needs to be the words of God, not your, your words, but God's words. I hope I achieved that. Something else that is very important to me was to be a team player in congregational life. This is not a one-man show. I'm part of a church family. You are all gifted, and together we serve in God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 and 9 is so important. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field and God's building. And therefore, I find rest. And this is part of the um, children's story as well this morning. I find rest in this wonderful reality that God is the one who builds his church. God is the one who builds a local congregation. It's not as if um, we as human beings and I as a pastor see myself as the one building a church or building a local congregation and God only lends a hand. God is the one who builds and he involves us in what he is achieving in the church and in congregational life. Secondly, I would just like to have a short reflection on the present um, and the future. Billy Graham passed away, I believe it was February the 21st in 2018. And when he passed, a lot of news agencies covered his death. And there was one news agency that made the following comment. Um, there will never be a Billy Graham again because the world in which he served is no longer possible. Billy Graham, the article said, only preached the gospel. And people was okay with that in the America of his time and in the world of his time. People shook his hand on the street and came to know him as a wonderful individual. But the world in which he operated is no longer anymore. And maybe this is true for our world in which we live as well, especially the post-COVID world. Um, we live in a different world. The world has changed for sure. But there's one thing that we should always remember, and that is that the gospel message never changed. It's important for us in our modern day mainline churches to have a very good look at the way in which we package the gospel message so as to 
send this good news message into our secular world so that the world can reset itself. The Lutheran Archbishop of Latvia, Janus Venagas, once said, Tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. Got that? We need to be very, very careful not to fall into the trap of traditionalism. Because if we do that, there will be no appetite for any change happening. God is calling us to cherish our tradition, but also say hello to the new traditions that we as his people need to develop under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in obedience to his word. And this is why I just love Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 and 8, and I would like to read them to you. Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their life. And then verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Some people are skeptical about any change that should take place. But we know COVID messed with our habits. COVID also messed with the habits of the mainland churches and churches in general. If you look closely, you will still see what happened during COVID here at Knox. There's some white duct tape on our pews reminding us of the two meter distance that we had to adhere to when we were allowed to get back into in-person worship. Some members here in the congregation, Bill, I know you asked me a number of times, Johan, we're not going to remove this stuff. And I said, I don't know. Maybe we should keep them on a little bit longer because we don't know if COVID might come back and we have to social distance again. So this is a reminder of how COVID missed with our habits as a church and our personal habits as well. Think back on what we did and what we went through. During COVID time, many a time I reminded myself of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow and forever. Not even COVID was able to miss with this truth. And this is how we live our lives as Christians, knowing that Christ never changes. And may you remember this as a church family when you move into the future. This past week, my eye caught the pictures of all my predecessors down in the hall next to the office. And I said to myself, Johan, you're one of them now. <laughs> my last Sunday. As of January 27th, I will be one of the predecessors of the minister that will follow me. And he or she will look at those pictures and say, oh, Johan is my predecessor. Looking at these pictures, we need to remind ourselves and we need to remember that change is a constant. A lot has changed since Reverend John McGregor started here in 1847. And now that Johan here on January the 22nd is saying goodbye, a lot has changed. And maybe it's important for all of us to develop a new appreciation for what the writer of the letter of the Hebrews wrote in verse 7. Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and trust the Lord as they do. The present tense of the verb here is very important. Remember, it's like continue to remember. Keep this on the front burner. Think about um, what your spiritual teachers taught you, showed you during their ministry here. And in doing that, don't cling to the past, but be open to where God is leading us as a church family into the future. 
because it's all about Christ Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and into all eternity. So it's not about Johann, it's about Christ. It's not about Johann's predecessor, Thomas. And it's not about Thomas's predecessor, Xander. And down the list we can go until we get to 1847. There's one common denominator in ministry and in church life. And that's not ministers. That's not Johan, please. That is Jesus Christ. He is the common denominator that binds us together as a church family, that binds us together as the church of Jesus Christ in this world. And he's the one that leads us into the future to be relevant as a congregation. Um, and I know there's so many renewal projects uh, that, that congregations can embark on. But to really be relevant uh, for us as a church family is not to major in minor things. We need to get to the core. Congregational life has never been about only preserving the past. Congregational life is about continuing the ministry of Jesus Christ and his kingdom in this world. And you know what? This is what God blessed in the past and still blesses in the present and into the future. His ministry. And now, dear family, and I promise I'm almost done, you can say and you can tell, hey, this is Johan's last uh, opportunity to share a few words, just so you have a bit of a break. This will be my last uh, few comments. And now the search for a new minister starts. Now the search for a new minister starts. Someone once wrote, when a church seeks a new pastor or a new minister, they want the strength of an eagle, the grace of a swan, the gentleness of a dove, the friendliness of a sparrow, and the night hours of an owl. <laughs> so when I, when I read this, I said to myself, Johan, um, it's, it's a certainty that you didn't live up to all these expectations. It's impossible. And I firmly believe there might have been many other expectations here at Knox that Johan didn't live up to. Um, and sorry for that. And, and I thought to myself, maybe I should just share this one incident. I, I had a very special bond with Marion Bayer here at Knox. There's some of you that don't know her. Marion was a very opinionated lady. But man, she and Norm were just the most amazing loyal people. Graham, they sat, sat there where, where you and your family are sitting, uh, Elspeth. That, that's, that was their seat. So I visited with Marion on a weekly basis when she was transferred to Riverside Glen. She was, she was really failing in her health. And having visiting with her on a weekly basis, Marion slowly but surely started opening up a little bit more. And then maybe six months before she passed, she said to me one day, Yawan, there's something I need to tell you before I die. And I said, oh my goodness, Marion. Uh, but you're welcome. What is it, Marion? She said, you just need to know that when you came to Knox, I said to my Knox friends, this man is too young for this congregation. <laughs> And you know what she said after that? But you've matured nicely. <laughs> oh, Marion. That was, that was just amazing. Um, and I really appreciated that. Um, so my final story is about... Um, the congregation that called the new minister, and just before the new minister started, a week prior to that, 
um, they, they called the search committee together and asked for prayers. So the first uh, individual prayed and said, uh, Lord, uh, please give our new minister wisdom. And another one prayed and said, uh, Lord, uh, please give our new minister vision. Another one prayed and said, Lord, please give our new minister hope. And then one of the search committee members concluded with the prayer, Lord, please enable us to give our new minister a chance. <laughs> and you know what? This is what Marion did. This is what Marion did. And this is what you as a church family did with this guy with the accent from the African continent. You gave him a chance here at Knox to, to be part of this church family, to walk alongside you. So my request to you this morning would be, when the new minister arrives, give him or her a chance. Continue with this generosity of yours in that individual's life. May God bless you, and thanks again that I could be part of this church family for so many years. Amen.
Let's join together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you always find ways to breathe your peace upon us. This morning we pray for those who struggle with faith. May their experience be that of Thomas, a discovery that you provide exactly what is needed to believe. Teach us as your children on how to live in such a way that we create pathways to your kingdom instead of barriers. This morning we want to pray for Glenn Sorderholm's ministry as interim moderator at Knox during the coming months. Bless him and your children here at Knox during this time of the sermon. And we know that your will will be done. We also pray for the sick of our congregation this morning. We bring to you Kay, Syme, George Lee, and George Griffith. We also pray for faith this morning with the sudden passing of dawn yesterday. We bring to you the people of Ukraine and the many refugees here in Canada from Ukraine. Lord, bring peace in this new year. We thank you for our life here in Canada. We pray for our government federally, provincially, and locally. Bless our leaders so we will be able to continue with this wonderful life bestowed upon us in this safe and prosperous country. Lord, I thank you for the seasons of life and the joy that I experience ministering amongst the Knox family. Bless them as they go from here. Hear us this morning when we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. My most favorite hymn in our hymnal, uh, 358, There is a Redeemer. So whenever you sing the song, you know, um, luckily God didn't call me to higher service, but I mentioned that more than once. If, if you have a funeral for Johan here at Knox, this is one of the hymns that needs to be sung. <laughs> this is how much I love this hymn. So let's sing this hymn this morning as our concluding hymn.
And now, dear family and friends, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go anywhere. <laughs> can I give you a hug? Of course you can. Just be careful with the arm. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. All right, you're you're not in charge anymore. Um, all right. Um, there's a quite, there's some, some more of a philo- philosophical question or theological question as to who as to whether he was, but uh, but that's okay. Um, so first things before we we uh, do other things, we have something to give you. So I would invite Wilma Welsh, our clerk of session, to come forward and make a presentation and say a few words. Thank you, Chris. I think all the thunder's been taken from what I was going to say. Um, I was thinking about him saying about his father, and you know, it was my father that I can attach the responsibility to for me going overseas. And, uh, and the minister of this church at that time preached a sermon in Toronto for me as I was designated as an overseas missionary. So there's been enough. And then Sterling. Um, I've not heard too much about Sterling. We've heard a lot about Max. Um, Sterling was my young brother's name. And I treasured him. He was precious. And I can recall the day the Guelph Mercury came to take a picture of me because I was a moderator elect. And the girl was obviously Roman Catholic. And she said, is this important? And my brother said, is the Pope important? (laughs) And from then on, he called me his popet. I shouldn't have told you that because that might be what I'm called. (laughs) But anyway, Johan, it's now time for us to to wish you well and to say goodbye. Um, You've been with us for such a long time. And now I have not been here all that time, but I have listened to your services on the air. We have learned that one of the things we learned from COVID is that we could still worship, even though we had to be uh, um, isolated, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, You brought Knox Knox back into my life again. Um, I was, uh, it was very difficult for me because I moved, and I've always followed the principle that I must worship where I live. So of course I lived around the corner from St. Andrew's Kitchener. So I moved there. And then when I moved back to Guelph, I thought, I'm on the Kitchener side of Guelph so I can travel. But now with the cane, thanks to my Menier's disease, um, I can, uh, I have returned to Knox Guelph and was welcomed warmly and within Even before I was elected um, to the session, I was asked if I would consider the responsibility of being uh, the uh, clerk of session. Johan, we have several gifts to present to you today, and we're not going to give you Sterling or Mac, because you already have them. <laughs> you want to talk if I just leave him a little bit? No, just, just leave him.
leave him run, leave him run. He's been sitting too long. He's got a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, during your ministry here, there's been a lot of emphasis put on the indigenous people. So we thought it was very important that we have, give you one something to represent the indigenous church. And here is an Anukchuk. Thank you so much. For... Now, don't go away, don't go away. <laughs> and our second gift is one that a person can always use. And in this little pouch is a purse of money. Oh my and this is for you and Jeanette to use as you wish. We're not going to tell you what to do with it. We are going to, we just want you to have a good time. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to have Jeanette with us, and we're just sorry that she's not here today. Um, the travel bag, there was, I thought there was to be a travel bag here, but I guess there isn't. And anyway, don't throw out the envelope because you think it's just a pay, an envelope because you got this. Keep the envelope because you need what's in it. Thank you, Wilma. Okay. May I hug you? No, you may, may have, but I'm, I'm still Oh, you're I'm not still, done I'm yet. I'm not finished oh, okay. yet. I'm not finished yeah. yet. Because I, I wanted to ask you a question. Should I share with my fiance, Jeanette, how much money is in here? No, okay. no, 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 no. I don't do that. No, no. Okay, good. No, it's it. I know how much is in it. Okay. <laughs> this card is from the session, of which I am the clerk of session at the present time. I think it's signed by almost everyone. We tried to get everyone's signature. We've been part of the, uh, as uh, other members of the congregation and your friends have been part of your the gift there. And this is a card from the session of Knox Guelph. Uh, and in addition to this, you're going to receive a memory book. And a memory book is going to have messages from people in the congregation that you can look at and remember people. Yeah. Um, and then someone is going to take some pictures of the, of the luncheon. And that is going to be given to you on a little stick to use in your computer. So if you want, you get lonely for us, oh, yeah. <laughs> then you can just put it in and listen to it. And you will, you will just enjoy being with everyone again. And in fact, you're going to be in Guelph, I presume, for a while. So we hope that you will still join us for worship. And okay. Yep. Your now, assumptions are wrong, Wilma. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I already moved to Woodstock to my children. Oh, you're living there? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Can there? you believe they put up with me? But they're still having you? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the, in the um, room, we may roast you. And oh. I want to say... I have no responsibilities for any of the roasting, but you will have the memories of it. And I think one of the things that I, I want to say is God bless you, Johan. You have been very faithful as a minister of this congregation. And, and as I talk, I've told a few presbyters, as they have been retiring, retirement means rolling over in the morning. And if you don't roll over in the morning, think of us. Okay. okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Mom. So, but in any case, we we will miss you, and we love you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I grew I grew up in Knox in my history. Thank you. Can I help you downstairs? Yes. Yes.
right. Thank you, Wilma. And um, if you're for the, uh, the lunch to follow, we uh, need someone qualified to say grace. So I'm going to invite uh, Shirley to come forward for that. Gracious, ever-present God, this day we celebrate and give thanks for Johann's ministry. We also celebrate his retirement. We do so with sadness as his leaving, even as we give thanks to you for his friendship and his ministry with and among us, and the heritage he leaves with us. As he says farewell to our congregation, which he has served and loved, We pray that you will bless him and be a sustaining presence as he adjusts to retirement and all the changes it will include. As he steps out on this new phase of his life's journey and his walk with you, we remember that as Christians, we do not retire. We simply change the ways and places in which we continue serving you in and through Christ Jesus. In the days ahead, grant him your peace of heart and of mind. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to share this time and luncheon today with Johan and to express our love and our gratitude. We also thank you for those who have provided the lunch and organized this reception. We pray that as this food nourishes our bodies, that your presence among us will nourish and bless our fellowship as your people. These and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our Savior and abiding friend. Amen. You can go now.
First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to these, this retirement luncheon for Johan. Um, it's really wonderful to see so many people from Knox here today, as well as our guests that we have here today. Um, Johan alluded to you folks, but we're going to put you on the spot anyway. We, unfortunately, Hannes and Mel and uh, Max and Sterling left because uh, mom and dad had to have a nap. The boys are driving home, apparently. So. Um, we'd also like to welcome Pat and Tony Bolinero, who have been friends of Johan and his family since, basically since he's come to Canada. Stand up and give a wave, guys. See, I told you I'm putting you on the spot. There you go. And we welcome Barb and John Muir, who are from the uh, church in Dorchester, or was it West Dorchester? Dor Dorchester, that we stole Johan from. So give a wave, folks. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. I know Johan was quite surprised to see you all, so it was lovely to have you folks with us today. I'd also like to thank the members of the Congregational Life Committee for their hard work for today. That's Wendy Dara, Nancy Dickinson, Heather Sanderson, Herda Trollope for organizing things and arranging for our lunch and the decorations and the setup, as well as Carrie Gordon, who's helped them out. And I saw several other people in and out of the kitchen today. So thank you all who had any part of putting things together for today. It was really appreciated. I hope you've been enjoying some of these um, interesting pictures of Johan over the years. He's shaking his head and hiding it. Um, we did have to censor. We did have to censor some of them, Johan, before we could put them up. So. That's right. Some were just sent amongst us, but you know. Anyway, um, the slideshow that we are enjoying today. Thank you very much to Heather Sanderson for all her work putting them together. I would get emails, and being so technologically capable, not. I happily sent it to Heather and said, please do something with this. So she did a wonderful job. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Brian Redpath, who is uh, looking after taping everything today. So I guess I have to be careful what I really do say, because it will be on recording for life. Thanks, Brian. As many of you know who have been in and out of church or possibly received emails that were sent out, thank you Mary for sending them out without sending to Johan, um, there has been a memory book that's been circulating around for people to write their best wishes, their memories, stories, whatever you want in the book about Johan, for Johan, at Johan. Uh, the book is here somewhere, Nancy. Oh, it's in the kitchen. It can probably come out of the kitchen so that Nancy can help you sign it. If you haven't had a chance to sign the book or leave your memory, Nancy, can you stand up so they can see who to look for? Nancy will be happy to help you with the memory book, so please, 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 before you leave today, do sign it. Okay, that's page one. It's okay. I, my husband looked at all my papers and I said, honey, it's big font. I'm blind. I need to be able to see. Yes. So, when I was asked to act as the MC for today, I was very happy to agree. I think I might have been one of the first people to welcome Johan here to Knox in a non-official capacity. He was moving furniture in when I happened to come in to get things set up for Sunday school. I think it was a Saturday. So, I welcomed him and shortly after that, we discovered we have had a very good relationship. We have disagreed over a few things on occasion. But we still managed to work well together, especially once I was able to convince him of the error of his ways. <laughs> so as I was preparing for today, I started to think about what does retirement really mean? So as we all do from time to time, I turned to Google to help me with my search. So the first definition, it's really interesting what definitions you can find. But the first definition I found defined retirement as the action of leaving one's job and ceasing to work. Well, that didn't give me much inspiration, I'll say. The next definition I found said, the withdrawal of a jury from the courtroom to decide their verdict. Jury's definitely out on that one. Finally, 
I found a definition in the Cambridge Dictionary for Retirement, and this is a quote, this is not me, this is a quote. The act of leaving your job and stopping working, usually because you are old. <laughs> so as you can see, I really struggled with the meaning of retirement. Retiring from your career, one that for you, Johan, has spanned 40 years, is a very huge life milestone. There is one question that a retiring person often does wonder about, and that is, how can I be sure that people are happy that I'm retiring and not just happy that they're rid of me? <laughs> However, my friend, if we go back to the jury comment from Eve earlier, I think we would all testify that as much as we want you to stay longer, 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 we truly want you to enjoy every blessing in your retirement, for sure. But I do want you to remember one thing. Retirement is not just an ending. Fred Rogers, who was also known as Mr. Dress Up, has said, when you are at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. Retirement can mean slowing down from a very busy lifestyle to begin a more relaxing lifestyle. It's uh, doing nothing without worrying about getting caught. <laughs> it's time to do all those things you didn't have the time to do before. Things like um, volunteering, maybe at Vacation Bible School or <laughs> Logos or just talk to Nancy and I. We could find you lots of spots to volunteer at. It's the time of life when people ask you what you are doing tomorrow. Ken, you don't even know what day of the week it is today. <laughs> it's that time in life when you can maximize the senior discount in a lot of places. Pat and I'll give you a list. It's that time in life when you can start giving advice to others. You know, all that advice that you never followed yourself. <laughs> it's when you don't have to remember what you got out of bed for because you can go back. <laughs> it's where every day is a Saturday. Retirement is a blank sheet of paper, a chance to redesign your life into something new or different. And as you retire, my friend, I pray that you will follow the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Dare to live the life you have dreamed for yourself. Go forward and make your dreams come true. I'm going to ask Mary, where is Mary? Mary to come forward and just say a couple of words because uh, next to me, she probably knows you all fairly well. Mary? I'll move over here, out of the way. Here we go. <laughs> she doesn't have as many pages as I do. No. And you know, Johan, you're not getting out of here without me saying something. <laughs> I was told to keep this short, so I might have to read real fast and talk real fast, if that's even possible. As you all know, I'm a woman of very few words. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, may you be proud of the work you did in this congregation. Be proud of the person you are and the difference you made here at Knox, and especially with me. It was an honor to work side by side with you. We shared many a tears and so much laughter that my heart has never been this full. Thank you for making the church and office a fun place to be. Thank you for the knowledge you have shared with me over the years and helped me understand the Presbyterian ways. Still staying a Catholic though. <laughs> you have been a great example of living a faith living a life of faith when mine was tested so many times. It truly was a blessing for me to be in part of your life for these 10 years. Working together this long, you knew me better than most. When I wouldn't shut up or when I never spoke, which was rare, you knew something was up and would come to me and ask what's going on. Off I went and I let it all out and stood there, or you sat there, very attentively thinking, why did I ask her? 
I should have known better. She's not going to stop until she gets this all out. Is she even breathing, taking a breath? Pretty sure there's no oxygen left in the room by the time I was finished. But seriously, you have the patience of a saint and you let me talk endlessly about anything and everything, especially my love for animals. I'm hoping the memories we made here together made a difference with you as it did with me. I will cherish them always. As I told you, no matter where I worked, I always had an office girlfriend that I could trust, tell all, and vent to. Thank you for being that girlfriend to me. I know you really didn't have a choice, and I labeled you that. However, you were the best one I ever had in my career. May God bless you and Jeanette for many years to come and fill both your lives with much love, happiness, and joy, but most of all, peace. I will miss you, girlfriend. I have, I have to say, Johan, I've, I've heard you called many things, but never a girlfriend, so. <laughs> You've heard it here first, folks. So as you've seen, we've got quite a few uh, interesting pictures up there. We managed to collect quite a few, not only from people here at Knox, but as people from around the world have contributed to these pictures. Um, your family has been wonderful in this age of technology. I've had many an email conversation with your siblings. Um, I won't tell everything, I promise. Uh, Johan is the eldest of four children. His three much younger, I was told to stress that, his three much younger sisters were more than pleased to send these photographs and some comments showing us all their brother over the years. Yes, that's where they came from. Don't blame me. I blame Honest. No, he had nothing to do with that. He had a couple, but not all of them. So I have some emails from your family. <laughs> No, fortunately they're not in Afrikaans. I did have her on standby just in case. <laughs> First one, dear big brother, bracket John, Johan, Pasteur. You live your life true to your calling. You lead by example, confirming that those who are in Christ are distinguished from unbelievers in that they have been gifted with the Holy Spirit, enabling them to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Being a true servant of the Lord, you unconditionally showed love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in all spheres of life. Notwithstanding difficult times in the past, you saw the light and followed the path, knowing that God's will for you will prevail. Therefore, we wish you luck and firmly, firmly believe that this new journey ahead of you is going to be the best ever. May God's grace be with you wherever you go. Love, Teresa and Lena. Or is it Leanna? I'm sorry. Yeah. The next one says, morning all. I cannot be there in person, and I am not a part of the community, but at the end of the day, we are all family through our beliefs. Johans, or as we call him, pasteurs, road up until now has been exciting, challenging, uphill battles, downhill routes, including emigrating from our beloved South Africa and being part of your congregation and touching each and every one's heart. He is a people's person and will always be. I know you at Knox will all miss him dearly, but you can still join him on his continuous tours. So this is not goodbye, but rather until later. He is starting once again a new phase in his life, hopefully less structured, less responsibilities, and being able to manage his time the way he sees fit and productive with some free time in between. I wish you a healthy, happy, and enriching life new path filled with good memories to treasure and lots of bright sunshine Africa days. Enjoy the next turn off on the road of life. It is time. May God bless you, love and hugs to you, your baby sister Manny.
Now, this one isn't a family member. However, she had a lot to say. I have been on several wonderful trips with Johan, including New Zealand, Australia, Machu Picchu, Galapagos, South Africa, Spain, Portugal, and Iceland. I also know Karen and Randy, as well as Lindsay and Brian Redpath, and Pat and Tony, Tony Molinero from our travels with Johan. We always had great fun and special times together. Whether out on the Great Barrier Reef, stumbling over rocky shores to see the blue boobies, a little toast in the highest Irish pub in the world in Cusco, in awe and fascinated by the fabulous animals in South Africa, climbing Roman ruins in Spain, icebergs and hot springs in Iceland, and so nice to have kept in touch. Still in touch with Johan and several other friends I have met on these trips. They were always amazing adventures with loads of fun. Johan was always there and or looking out for each and every one of us and always had a very calming effect no matter what. He was interested in everyone and everything and was just a super nice person. I was glad to hear that here today that secret activities have been planned as part of the celebrations. He'll love that. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing about the celebration for Johan and I'm sure it will be a happy day for everyone. Enjoy each day from Carol Paterek in Calgary. Carol was a lovely lady and those of us who know her have been very much blessed by her. Yes, and she could do more than us. She was older than all of us and could keep up more better than we could. And I have one last one, except I'm not too sure how to pronounce this one word. I'll do the best I can. Hello from Frutzig in the Southern Cape, South Africa. I'm sorry, I don't... Oh, Fraetza. Oh, say it again. Fraetza. Fraetza. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not very good in my Afrikaans. I would like to say thank you for the warm welcome I received from you and from the whole congregation during my two visits there in Guelph. I want to wish the Knox Guelph congregation all the best for the future. Johan spent 20 years in Canada and will try to visit as often as possible. I hope so. He enjoyed his ministry as well as his times of service with you at Knox Guelph. He formed many rewarding friendships and will stay in contact through the coming years. His whole family here in South Africa are looking forward to seeing him more regularly. At 65, Johan is now looking forward to his retirement after 40 years of full-time service as a minister. I'm looking forward to us spending quality time together and enjoying good health, God willing. We are very blessed to have found each other at this time of our lives. Our most precious commodity now is the luxury of time to spend together. We wish you all good health, peace of mind and happiness we are all blessed to be alive and must regard each new day as a gift and a blessing. Best wishes to you all, Jeanette Murray. I think that was more to us instead of you, but it was worth reading out loud. <laughs> so, those were the emails I got that I can read. <laughs> Seriously, that is, no. <laughs> um, I think at this time I'd like to invite Bill Nicholson to come forward. I'm not too sure where Bill is. Or do you want to wait? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> a few weeks ago or so, I think it was, I was asked to say a few words about Johan from my perspective as his friend and then also on behalf of the congregation. So two for one sale here, shorter. It was a real honor to participate today in this way until I realized that I actually had to write something down and say, that part's not that bad. Unfortunately, my words could never do justice to this time. I'm not funny, but it, at least it comes from my heart. Johan, from my perspective, I will tell you what I miss, will miss. <clears throat> I will miss all the conversations we had together. We solved the problems of the world. We vented, we laughed, we cried together. 
We talk sports, hunting, fishing, your homeland. You even made me sit down and look at your home on the YouTube. But, and we prayed together. But I just came to the realization of something when I was writing this, it may not mean anything, but in all the occasions that we met, food was involved. <laughs> even our prayers together had to include a grace. Breakfast, lunch, dinners, appetites, or appetizers. So should you come back here, and maybe he will after this, I got thinking, I really think that we could do real well with a pizza and a Chinese food franchise. So please come and see the Bill and uh, Johan restaurant. Johan, I am going to miss some of your slight South African accents. Oh, they were there today. They, they came back again, it was wonderful. I will miss the word spirit for spirit. And if that's not good, there was bolding today, which I hadn't heard for a while. My favorite, although he's getting a little bit better now, bull. You know who bull is? Bill. <laughs> it's getting better now. But I am really going to miss that. Johan, I am going to miss your phone calls. Although I will admit, and you know this is true, that when your name would come up, I figured he needed or wanted something. Come on, we're all, we all know that one, right? Um, perhaps that is why I always started our calls with saying right off the bat, no, I can't, before I even gave him any chance to say anything. It would always start with, hello, Bill. Bill. Johan here, how are you? If it was, hello, Bull, and he added, my dear friend, on top of that, it was going to be a good one. And if, however, along with all that, there was a lot of pleasantries about what am I doing, how busy is work, I had to brace myself. I know that. However, now I will be more than happy to take your phone call. I look forward to your phone calls. Because I, when I see this come up, I will answer with, I would love to. Because he will be in South Africa. And I'm sure that he is going to call me and probably everyone to ask Lisa and me at least to come over for an extended visit. Right? To Mossel Bay. No pressure, but we would love to. <laughs> and then I thought, now that maybe a lot of us will do the same thing. If we do, it'll be good, because it'll keep him busy with all of us until we're in our mid eight. he's in his mid-80s. On behalf of you, though, for your support, maybe this would be a good opportunity to set up an Airbnb down there <laughs> and at least get the money out of our wallets. <laughs> 12 years ago, you married Lisa and me. And I will remember that service always. I really don't have too much choice because the photos hang on the wall at the top of the stairs. And I see you every morning when I get up. And I have to say goodnight to you every morning when I go to bed. But more importantly than any of what I'm just saying, yes, you are my dear friend. I will remember when we joined approximately 13 years ago, uh, Lisa and I joined the church. So we are still newcomers. But I remember saying how blessed and how fortunate we were to be a part of Knox because of the beauty of the music ministry, the love and the friendship of every one of you here, and of course you, not just as my, the ministry, but as a minister, but as my pastor. You have raised my self-esteem. You have lifted my spirits. You have brought me closer to God. My grandson and my, uh, his girlfriend go to University of Toronto. They have been able to wish with us a few times. And young people can be very perceptive, can't they? I remember after asking them after the service, what did they think about it and the minister? I don't remember if you know what they said, but I told you, this is what they said. He is so very genuine. 
What a wonderful way to be seen. Johan, it is important for you also to know that at this may be my voice you are hearing right now, but they are also the words that come from all our hearts here today. As a matter of, point, as a matter of fact, at this point, um, we were supposed to hear another vo beautiful voice sing with Carrie Gordon. Unfortunately, you mess it all up because she was gonna sing, There is a Redeemer. But you did that, thanks a lot. But that's okay. Keeps this a little shorter. All right? Yeah. There is so much that could be said. And I am certain many of us have or will share their thoughts with you. Um, you came to Knox almost 14 years ago. And there is a scripture from Corinthians that you have used. And you said this in, in the service today, basically, where Paul said, I decided to know nothing about you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Your focus has always been to deliver that message to us and that it is his love, his forgiveness, and his life that must be seen when anyone should walk through our doors. You have instilled this in, in us. Joanne, you always want our actions and our voice to be in his name, to have us work in harmony with one another, in unity, to have differences of opinions, but in love, so that all the people on the outside looking in would know that there is something special here in Knox Church. You call us your family, your friends, your brothers and sisters, as well as being our pastor. But in the most wonderful way possible, the line is not distinct because your service as minister is part of your friendship to us. And that is why you make such a difference in our lives. Now this may seem a little insignificant, but even taking the time to greet us before a service shows your thoughtfulness and your genuineness. Shirley in her wonderful sermon a couple of weeks ago talked about if we reach just one person, we have done our job. Well, you have reached Lisa and me, that's two. And now, if you would just look around, it can be said of each one of us who are here today. What a wonderful knowledge you take with you. Yours was a service of humility, faithfulness, and love. I often pray before the service that God would bless every church where his gospel is preached. And here at Knox, that was shared every Sunday. God's word, both spoken and demonstrated through you, have made us a strong, loving, inclusive, and united church. God continues to change our lives through you and what he, a gift he has given us through your ministry. Now, I don't want this to sound, because it does a bit like a eulogy at somebody's <laughs> funeral. I mean, he's just going to another continent, another part of the world. And hopefully, you will be back occasionally. And I could keep on going. But in the meantime, I do know that this reception is um, being done with, like, on the film or on the video for you and your family. So at this point, hi there, Jeanette. Yeah. When you hear this, uh, he is all yours now. <laughs> Good luck. I would like, <laughs> I would like everyone, if they would please stand with their glasses for a toast. Johan, Johan, to our pastor, friend, and brother. May your future be filled with love and joy. May the countless blessings of God bring you uh, and your family his peace. Go ahead. And finally, while you're still standing there, Johan, at the <coughs> excuse me, at the end of every service, you give us the benediction. Today it is our turn to give you our blessing as we say together, if you would, from these blue strips of paper. 
Johann, we pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit we with you and your family now and forevermore. Amen. Happy retirement, Johan, from all of us. Thank you. I'm going to give Johan a chance to uh, for rebuttal <laughs> in just a moment. One last thing, or actually just a couple of little details before we close up today. A reminder about the book, please, please, please take a minute to sign the book. We'll bring it out of the kitchen because the kitchen will be busy and we'll maybe put it over by the door on that uh, table with the blue cloth in the basket. Please sign the book if you can. Um, I'm not sure if the plan is for it to stay here for a couple of days in case people miss it. So do try to get it done today if you can. Um, when you leave and there is no rush, but when you leave, if you could take your dishes over to the table, that would be appreciated. And of course, as always with these gatherings, able-bodied people to help put tables and chairs away are, would be gratefully appreciated. So our wonderful, beloved Johan. Pardon me? Oh, the balloons. I'm being told to, about the balloons. The balloon flowers that you see on your tables, you are welcome to take home if you wish, as the kids immediately start grabbing them. Um, Yes, that's right. Heather made them all, by the way. Thank you, Heather. So I'm going to just pull a little bit of liberty here since um, our Afrikaans Canadian minister is leaving. The Irish Canadian person would like to give you an Irish blessing as well. May you always have a sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel so nothing can harm you. May you always have work for your hands to do, and may your pockets always hold a coin or two. May the sun shine bright on your window pane. May the rainbow be certain to follow each rain. And may the hand of a friend always be near you, and may God fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. Tot ziens, my vriend, and best of Ainsa. So, friends, you can tell I wasn't actually prepared to speak here at the luncheon. I have nothing written down. Um, I thought to myself, well, I kind of played the music inside of me during the service of worship. And that's why I also tried at the announcements to thank as many people as possible. But I'm very grateful for this opportunity, Karen, given at the end of this wonderful luncheon. And um, all the the wonderful things that's been said this afternoon. It humbles me a lot <laughs> um, to know that um, my ministry actually had effect in the lives of people. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, a few things, maybe just so everybody's on the same page. I will be returning to South Africa, but I will also spend a lot of time here in Canada. So when I announced my retirement, one of the members of the congregation here at Coffee Hour asked me, say, oh, do you have any plans for retirement? And I said, yes, of course I do. If I didn't, I would have stayed. <laughs> so there, there's, there's a lot that I still would like to do. And it wasn't an easy decision in a sense to decide on retirement. Because I'm still fairly healthy, although my eye reminded me, and the specialist said when I asked what did I do, he said nothing, you're just getting old. Um, that this is a time where many of the things that I would love doing is the time to do it. Because five years from now, I don't know. There's dawn. Maybe tomorrow, I don't know. Hey, who do, how do we know? So I would like to spend more time in traveling. You see a lot of the pictures here. Um, of travel friends that submitted them. I will spend time with my family. You saw Hannes, Mel, and the two boys. Um, you cannot just say goodbye to them and never see them again, hey? Although we have the wonderful technology of FaceTime and 
you know, um, what is it, Face, Facebook can also do something of that, and uh, Zoom, I will content, continue with my Zoom account. Um, so I, I'm planning on leaving uh, this first or the second week of April, and then I'll be back in July again, because I have a trip scheduled for uh, Scotland in August. And after that, I will, sc I will work on my plans for 24. I need to do at least, at least two trips a year, so I'll see you at least twice a year, because when I'm here, I will just show up on a Sunday, okay? And you will say, oh, who's this new individual here? So, um, so that, that's the plan. Um, something else, those of you that would like to continue a kind of a contact relationship with me, you have my email address. And I know when a minister leaves a congregation, you should actually leave, and that's my intention. Um, you cannot, uh, in this process, where you're looking for a new minister, or you have a new minister, then from the side or from the grave, try and influence stuff. And John Barb, you've been in Dorchester, and, and that's what I did over there. Hey, I went there when I was asked, um, while there was a vacancy, for funerals. Because you must remember, I've, I've been there six and a half years. I've always been in long-term ministry. Thirteen and a half years of ministry amongst you, you are my family. There might be some of you maybe in March, you know, when I'm, while I'm still here and there's no new minister. There's a passing in the family. You contact Mary and say, Mary, contact Johan. Or you have my cell phone number, you contact me personally and say, Johan, somebody passed away. Would you mind officiating at the celebration of life? I'll do that. Okay, so it's not like I'm just leaving you now and say, sorry guys, don't call me again. <laughs> a family doesn't work that way. Family doesn't work that way. So please, if there's anything that I can help with in March, let me know as far as personal stuff is concerned. I will be away in February. I'm leaving on February the 6th, God willing, with a group of Canadians to South Africa <laughs> <laughs> for a tour. <laughs> can you believe it? So that should have happened years ago, but COVID messed up all our plans. It's like, well, thanks. And I, sorry that I messed up the, uh, the hymn of Carrie this morning. So <laughs> COVID messed up with my life as well. Um, and then I'll be back on February the 27th. So from February 28th, I'll be available until March the 31st. There's anybody that needs something from me. Okay. Um, what is the other thing that I wanted to say? Um, I need to say it now. Yeah, that's age. That's age again. Oh, maybe I should just, I should just close with um, what Mary said. <laughs> that's true, you know. She, um, so one day, the logos, Nancy and Karen was in uh, in the library. My son, Hannes, gave me some red peppers that they... Can I share that, Mary? Okay, imagine that. So Mary said she, she's not a lady of a lot of words. Man, you know, that's not 100% true. Mary likes them. So I brought... And I know Mary likes peppers. So I brought these peppers from the farm. I don't eat them. And I handed them to Mary, and I said, these are papers from the farm. My son brought them to me. And I went back into the library where Karen and Nancy was, and Mary came in to the library and said, I cannot talk, I cannot <laughs> John, you should have told me this stuff is so hard. <laughs> so poor Mary took a nice bite of one of those papers, and they were so hot she lost her voice. And when she left, I said to uh, Karen and Nancy, maybe I should get more of those papers. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so Nancy and Karen, of course, they looked at me. That's very inappropriate to say stuff. <laughs> and this is the African side of me. So I apologize for that, because we always <laughs> see the funny in some of this stuff. 
So Mary, thank you so much for so many years of laughter. And, and even it was tears of red peppers. That was good. <laughs> thank you once again, my dear family. This was an amazing day. And uh, God bless you all. And we will be in touch. Take care.